Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. You can hop on over like a bunny, like a bunny rabbit to jeremysiskin.com, hop, 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 and get those books. Uh, you, are, you won't regret it. Um, I've been doing a little Chick Corea study. Um, I find his just playing so fascinating. There's so much that I just honestly don't understand. So I'm trying to work towards understanding. And one thing that I did was I transcribed three different introductions that Chikoria played uh, to Autumn Leaves. And there's a lot to unpack and I'm gonna be sharing a lot of it on the channel here. But I wanted to show you how I might work with some of these transcriptions. And I know this is gonna be like just the eternal frustration of some of you, like you want to get it into the cool scales and notes, but I'm going to show you something that is equally important to the notes and something that I think Chikorea was a master of. And maybe by the end of this video, you'll agree. And that is playing with mixed different senses of purpose, emotion, and gesture. So let me play for you. Um, it's impossible to get this into a good angle, and I know that you're not gonna be able to read my awful handwriting, but this is actually my transcription that I did of uh, Chick's introduction to Autumn Leaves from the album Rendezvous in New York. Uh, I'm not gonna play it as well as he does, but I'll, you know, I'll play it, I'll do my best, so it's... Um, so some impressive stuff, some technically impressive stuff, very interesting choices, some of which I just can't make head nor tail of, hide nor head, something like that. Um, but what I want to talk with you about today is how he shows these different personalities. It's almost like he's doing an impression of different people throughout this um, introduction. And I want to show you, even if you have, don't have access to the notes, and the technique and whatnot that he has access to, how you can take some inspiration from this solo. So um, to me, the very first thing he does in this very first measure is like a solo wind instrument. He's kind of playing this just soloistic um, lingering line. It's mostly from the octatonic scale, although he takes a couple notes outside of the octatonic scale. But it's... <laughs> and he lands on, on this B natural, which is kind of an unusual place to land. And so if I'm going to try to make a, an introduction in the same spirit as Chick Corea, I'm gonna pretend like I'm a little solo clarinet and I'm gonna kind of wander and twist through something just like Chick does. So let me, I'm gonna pick a different key. I'm gonna go. That's one little version. I'll do another version, different key. Okay, so I'm trying to capture that same feeling of kind of this up and down uh, legato wind instrument approach. And then what does he do from there? He does these flourishes. Um, Um, and he gets kind of progressively faster. I think of them as kind of like whirling dervish, Tasmanian devil spins. Let me see if I can play it a little bit better. I need to actually look at the notes here. And where does it lead? It leads into a big grand cadence. Very Russian, very serious, okay? So I don't need to play the same notes, but I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna start slow and do an accelerating whirling dervish spin and lead into a cadence. Let's see how it goes. I'll 
try another version. Okay, so now I'm gonna put these two parts together, just like Chick did. Um, so I'm gonna have this single line wind instrument, and then I'm gonna have this two-handed whirling dervish ending with a cadence, so. good as Chicks is, it's not. <laughs> but I'm trying to capture the spirit of his introduction. Here we go. I don't know if that was my favorite cadence. So what does he do next? Next, he does something that, I have kind of these two different images in my head, um, and maybe it's some combination. So the first, uh, let me play this for you. So the first thing is that it's like tweaked out Bach, which AKA Shostakovich, uh, you know, it kind of has this Baroque, but, but. so I could imagine, you know, a Bach, Prelude or food. Um, but his is tweaked out because it's using kind of all 12 tones and not necessarily in the same key. The other word that comes to mind, especially because of these big leaps and the staccato articulation, is that it feels very pointillistic, right? Pointillism, like in art, when you put those little dots and it makes a bigger uh, painting. We talk about that in music too. Usually music that is staccato and has big leaps, like this does here. And so let's look at how this resolves. So again, it kind of resolves into a somewhat traditional cadence, right? I hear like a five to one. Okay, so I'm gonna do my own improvisation in that style. Just one note per hand, some big leaps, some staccato articulation. Let's see what happens. So, um, cadence very much, but I'm capturing somewhat the same essence. Let's try another one. That had a bit of a better flow. One more just for fun. Try to put my three parts together. I've got my legato wind line, I've got my whirling Tasmanian devil, and then my pointillistic kind of Bach counterpoint. So there's the whirling dervish. parts. What happens next? This is actually probably the hardest one for me to define because it starts very much like um, what we just came from, like this kind of 12 tone counterpoint. It goes uh, but then it devolves into something very tonal, a triad 
but still with that pointillistic feel. Right, these are each just little drops of paint on the canvas. And then, this doesn't exactly cadence, it kind of goes into this languorous scale. Okay, so this is, I, let's call it a little three-part um, gesture. First part is this pointillistic kind of really somewhat random, jumpy sounding counterpoint. And then a triad arpeggio, but still pointillistic. And then I've got my scale against legato chords in the left hand. All right, let me do my own version. from one to the other. Let's try it again. I've got my weird counterpoint, pointillistic. And then I'm doing a triad arpeggio. And I've got my scale kind of melting away. Now, from here, we actually go into time. And this is pretty tonal. He plays. So I can really hear the chords. But it still is just one voice in the left hand, one voice in the right. And then it goes into more traditional right hand kind of bebop-ish, modern bebop-ish style soloing with some comping in the left hand. So, so single lines. Okay, so I'll do that same thing. I'll aim for the key of, I don't know, A minor uh, instead of G minor. What if I aim for the key of E flat instead? Uh, nah, I don't want to get to bebop so fast. All right, so I'm going to try to put this whole thing together. Wish me luck. So first my languorous wind line to whirling dervish. To a cadence. Now I've got my counterpoint. Now I'm going to melt between these three things. time and more tonal. And there's my Czech Korea introduction. Let's do one more version. You could try it with me. So first we start with a single line, wind. Now whirling arpeggios.
So just like that, you're playing like Chick Corea. But it is kind of cool how much of how much inspiration you can get without necessarily looking at what scale is he using, what rhythms is he using. Just thinking about instead the gesture of uh, each subsection. And Chick Corea's gestures are constantly so fascinating. So he's such a great person to study for this kind of inspiration. Great. I hope that you uh, enjoyed that. Stay tuned for more on some of these Chick Corea introductions to Autumn Leaves. If you want some more basic skills, the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series uh, might tickle your fancy. Uh, if you enjoy some of these more advanced concepts, like playing like Chick Corea, check out playing solo jazz piano. Um, and I mentioned a bunny rabbit earlier, so feel free if you stayed this long, comment with something bunny related. So. Uh, I hop to see you soon and take good care. Bye-bye.